And now on to our, our final award of the evening, which is for lifetime achievement. The winner of this award is often described as formidable, both in English and French, formidable in French, now into her 10th decade, with 10 grandchildren and 10 great-grandchildren to match, she remains a considerable force of nature. When I wake up in the morning, she told one interviewer, I always say to myself, let's be positive and creative. What can I improve around me? She's enjoyed a diverse career as a nurse, an employee of the Alliance Francaise, and a politician. But it's for her achievements in wine that she is most famous. She took over a super second growth Bordeaux Chateau in 1978 and ran it with passion and considerable success for nearly 30 years before it was sold for reasons of succession to Champagne Louis Roderer in 2006. But Madame, as she is known to the people who work for her, wasn't done yet. At the age of 79, she decided to create a new brand in Stellenbosch, making her first wines in 2008. Located on the Simonsberg, her winery has established itself as one of the best in the Cape, specializing appropriately enough in Bordeaux varieties, but also making impressive Shiraz and Chardonnay. She still takes an active role in the running of the business, visiting the estate on a regular basis to see her vines and part of her celebrated glassware collection. Only last year, she totally remodeled the tasting area, always searching for perfection. As well as focusing on the quality of her wines, she is a notable philanthropist, providing free health care and literacy programs for her workers and giving them the chance to buy their own houses. Our winner tonight has already received many awards, including the Légion d'honneur and the Ordre du Mérite Agricole in her native country, France. But tonight, we wanted to add one more, recognizing her remarkable and ongoing contribution to the world of wine. Anyone who's been lucky enough to drink a bottle of the legendary 1982 Pichon Lalande and to see the foundations she laid at that chateau will recognize what she achieved in Bordeaux. Anyone who's tasted recent vintages of her Lady May Red in, in South Africa will recognize what she's achieved there too. Few people make such a mark on two continents. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in welcoming May Eliane de Lonkasang the winner of our 2017 Lifetime Achievement Award to the stage, Madame. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, how wonderful it is to be with you all tonight at the occasion of this International Wine Challenge Award dinner. I wish to thank from the bottom of my heart the International Wine Committee for this prestigious award at a time when I really thought that my professional life belonged to the past. Aging. For a vine, aging is one of the keys to obtain excellence. A vineyard with all vines is a treasure of rare and unique qualities due to their strong and deep roots. For human beings, aging is also important. Time allows great memories, added knowledge and experience, and let's hope wisdom. When I look back at the very hard time we went through in Bordeaux, between World War I and World War II. Yeah, I can't quite remember that time. You were, you were not born, any of you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> At that time, due to the recession and due to the bad weather conditions of several years in a row, in the decade of the 30s, only two vintages in Bordeaux the 1934-1937 produced good wines. Imagine how could a producer survive selling only one or two vintages in 10 years. It is only in the 50s, 20 years later, that the wine industry developed 
following the opening of world markets. And thanks to a more regular quality of the wines, due to the scientific research by Professor Emile Penot and Professor Pascal Ribeiro Gallo of the Bordeaux University, and the development of other universities such as Bordeaux, uh, Montpellier, and Dijon in France, Kaisenheim in Germany, Davis in California, and many others. Scientific knowledge in viticulture, enology, and winemaking spread out to so many professionals and students all over the world has created the global industry that we know today. One of such countries where its improvement and evolution has been the most dramatic over the 20 years is South Africa. It is fascinating history. It goes back to the 17th century. And as mentioned in the precious book written in 1812 by Professor André, André Julien, the wines of Constantia uh, are, were considered at the time and today to be very similar to Iken and the quality of Tillenbosch rather similar to the left bank of Bordeaux. As I have always been fascinated in my life by the concept of creating, this passion for adventure has led me towards my, the end of my career to establish a vineyard on the lower slopes of the Simonsberg Mountains in Stellenbosch, when called Glenelie. This farm also goes back to the beginning of the 17th century, when the Huguenots, French Huguenots, started planting vines on quality terroir described by André Julien, as previously I mentioned. Today, to the vineyard and the winery, I have added a school for the children of the farm and a glass museum presenting 400 rare pieces from the Roman time to modern glass culture by the greatest artists. Glass and wine are married together. In the world, more areas have also developed more interesting terroirs, most inter interesting terroirs today called New World, such as Australia, Chile, Argentina, and many others. And now, even England, with the change of climate condition, can join the club. As a conclusion, the vine is a very old and wild little plant. Often mentioned in the Bible, it is strong, adaptable, and mysterious. It becomes a magic drink, a link between soil, people, and God. Ceres and Bacchus at the Greek and Roman time, and today the God of the Christian also. It is really a plant for eternity. But what makes wine so special, and this is very, very important, is what wine must not be considered as a product. Wine is art. Each wine is a creation. From a terroir to a terroir, from a vintage to a vintage, each wine has its own personality, its own qualities, its own specificities. It is a great world that we all have in common and that we share. As I used to say, good wine brings people together. It is so true. A great French politician, Gabriel Dolonnet, wrote, wine belongs to a civilization where people like to meet and love each other to avoid war and hatred. We are so lucky to belong to such a civilization. It keeps all, all of us young, friendly, and happy. It makes our lives beautiful. This is why... <laughs> this is why we are all here today. God bless you. 
Thank you for your attention. You are our first uh, woman winner yeah. of the International Wine Challenge Lifetime Achievement Award, so congratulations for that. Thank you. Um, is it, have you seen uh, opportunities for women in the wine trade improve over the last 40 years? A lot. Yeah. When I came in in 78, mm -hmm. I was practically the only one. <laughs> uh, uh, ladies like Corinne Metelopoulos was not there, Philippine de Rothschild was not yet there, <laughs> and they really looked at me like if I was something really, something very special, very, and doubting a lot of what a woman could achieve. It was not very comfortable, in fact. <laughs> so I understand that um, you took over the reins of the wine in mm -hmm. 1978 at Bichon Contest. Mm -hmm. So what's happened in the last 40 years in Bordeaux? What, what do you think's changed? Well, it's a good question. Um, well, about ladies, things yes. have changed a lot. <laughs> now they're all there. Um, they went to university, they studied, um, well, and most owners have women at the head of the vineyard or as winemakers. Not. But on the ladies' side, everything is quite different. Now, on the general idea, I think it was good that ladies would be called, because I always make a parallel as creating vintage every year and for a lady to give birth, to mother to give birth to a new baby. It's very much alike. Each baby in a family is different. Still, they, they, they are the same care and same love from the mother, and they have a style that comes from the family. It's very similar to what we can do uh, in uh, thank to our souls, the personality of the place where we are, the climate. So there's something very much in common between uh, taking care of children and growing vines <laughs> and making wines. Uh, there's a big, so I think it's very important to have a feminine touch. There are, we, we do things, of course, by knowledge, but also by certain love of creating something new. It's this idea of creation, to me, is terribly important. We, we're not just like in a factory, like in an industry, bringing up a new car, or a new, we, we bring something alive. Yes. Like we do in our families with the child. That, that certainly explains why I think women winemakers do a very good job. I never really thought of it like that. that makes a, <laughs> sorry, that makes a great I'm deal sorry. No, no, it's wonderful. I think that um, there is, I think uh, every uh, woman winemaker that I know that I'm very friendly with, um, they treat wines less as a recipe than that. There is a sense yeah. of organic, yeah. Sensitivity, it's a true and throw. It's creation. Yes. Yeah. So this, this is clearly not the first great award you've achieved in your life. Um, but um, So what does it mean to you um, to win uh, this Lifetime Achievement Award at the IWC? I, I thought first, uh, I thought that really my career was over and <laughs> that I, was, I belonged to the past. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden you brought me back inside um, a modern life again. Well, of course, I'm still in modern life with Glen Ely, yes, because this is my other baby. Yes. This one is only 11, 12 years old. This is also your grand, grandson introduced me of to Of course. Uh, uh, two grandsons, Arthur and Nicholas. Nicholas. And um, so, of course, what is lovely in Glen Ely is that I work every day with young people. So, it, of course, it makes me to, it helps me to keep young, yes. in a way, if, if, I, if I may say. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then, I, be I believe a lot in South Africa, because the terroir is beautiful. It was pointed out 200 years ago, so it's not, it's not new world. It's not new story, you know? No. Not, it was forgotten because of the apartheid for a long time. The wines were banned, banned and they could not export, they couldn't sell. Um, so they made very ordinary wine because that's the only thing they could do because they had not much money to spend. 
like buying new oak and things that they couldn't do. They knew it was good to, to do it, but they, they didn't have the money for it. Now things are getting better, slowly but surely, and the wines are showing beautifully. What is interesting is that uh, in all this area, and thanks to the climate, we can do all kinds of wines, from Burgundy style to Bordeaux style, from red to white. So that is very different from Bordeaux. It's, um, it's an open mind. I'm going to judge a competition out there in September, bring my wife for the first time. No, really? Yes. Uh, I'm, I will not be there, I'm sorry. No, but, uh, I shall, uh, I shall I do my best to love, not this ticket anyway, I hope to visit it this time. I hope you love it. We, you. we love it. Yeah. Anyway, Man of the Long Sound, congratulations. Uh, thank you for taking the trouble to come to London. Thank you so much. <laughs>